and welcome back to my channel. This episode is all about how you can get your new baby to do the very best they can with their sleep. Now we all know that newborns aren't going to sleep through the night, none of us do, but what's the best they could be doing and are they doing that? And more importantly, how can we instill some really basic strategies as a parent, actual parenting techniques, to encourage healthier sleep from them as they develop and they grow and as they're ready? This is a really exciting episode. I wish I had this. This is like the Bible that we need to be given when we have a baby for the first time. Now, it's not really sleep training. It's sleep training is something that I would reserve for the kind of six month age bracket and beyond, and um, maybe just before that. But when we're talking about new babies and newborns, lots of people use the idea or the phrase sleep shaping. And I think that's more appropriate. I like, I like using my, my term is sleep prep <laughs> because we're just preparing them to become a good sleeper. So we're going to do some sleep prep. And this isn't about the baby really doing anything. This is parenting strategies. These are completely parenting strategies um, that are kindly and lovingly going to just set the scene and show them the way and really just create that space and that environment for them to do the very best that they can with their sleep. Which brings me nicely on to my very first point, which is environment. The environment is absolutely key and the first and most simple thing that you can use to help your baby to recognize things, to give them cues and triggers and it will even help encourage their circadian rhythm, which is their body clock, which will help them recognize night from day, sleep time from awake time. In time, they'll get this, but by showing that for, from the beginning, that's really gonna help them get there sooner. So how can you do that with night and day? Well, obviously you've got light and dark. So uh, we want lights on or daylight coming in when it's daytime and we want to black out the daylight or have all the lights off and have it nice and dark when it's nighttime. That's a simple day night differentiation. Um, but also with naps, it's fine when they're having their daytime sleep to make it a little bit darker. If they're in their cot or in their, you know, in their sleep space in a bedroom, I would absolutely close the curtains and make it nice and dark because darkness promotes the production of melatonin, which is a sleepy hormone. And light is actually going to interfere with that a bit and make it a little bit harder. I mean, they will still produce melatonin and they will still have a sleep in the light. New babies do. You've seen that. They'll sleep anywhere. They'll sleep in a pram or in a noisy restaurant. They will sleep anywhere. But by showing them this and by helping them along with those uh, rhythms, they will actually, it will help to create that rhythmicity in their body of sleep time, wake time, sleep time, wake time, rather than relying on things like the motions of prams or the bottle or the this or the that to get them to sleep. So it's just really good practice. Um, okay, so the other thing that is a factor in the environment is you. You are part of the environment around them. When you are, like I am right now, fully animated and eye contact and engaging, that's like what I call daytime mode. Full voice comes out and you might be sing-songy and you know, cheerful with your tongue and you're just all expressive. You know, that's a daytime version of you. The nighttime version of you goes to just whisper, no voice comes out and just really bland and boring. Actually, I can talk, can't I? <laughs> um, really bland and boring. So your facial expressions are just pretty neutral. You know, you're not cross or grumpy, but you're also not all animated and engaging. You're just like, nothing to see here. Zen <laughs> zone and quiet and calm. And that, I say bland and boring because I think that's the best way to explain it because as your baby grows and as they become more aware and alert and into what's going on, taking all these signals in, they'll start to recognize that this animated awake you is associated with awake time. And this very bland and boring version of you is associated with sleep time. And they won't feel compelled or you won't be um, engaging them and stimulating them with that engagement from your awake mode. So if you can adopt those two modes, daytime mode and nighttime mode, you'll find that that will actually pay off massively over the coming months. So do it from the beginning, get in that practice. Um, okay, 
I mentioned this in the last episode, but I want to explain it a little bit more clearly in this episode about bedtime routine. Now, you can start a bedtime routine with a baby, right, from the beginning. I mean, in, after the first one or two weeks, I would really start thinking, right, okay, now, we, now we're settled and we're at home, what's our routine gonna look like? Now, routine at this age, babies, newborns, does not need to be rigid or regimented at all. It just needs to contain a couple of simple steps that are flexible, but that you do each evening, again, to set that scene, to set the environment, and to prepare them that the night time is coming, which in time will be their longer stretch of sleep. That's when you want it. But at first it won't come like that. We're just showing them that this is night time now, this is different. I would highly recommend that whatever happens in terms of whether you're bathing them or not, or a quick wash or you know, whatever you do in the bathroom, you then go to the room they are going to sleep in for the night, which is typically parents' room. And you finish off your bedtime routine in that room. So that's probably going to be the last milk feed of the day, or you know they're going to feed again in a few hours, but you know what I mean, the last daytime feed, because then they're gonna be night feeds. Um, that you, you maybe you have a little lullaby and that they settle to sleep there. Whether that's in your arms, in their crib, you know, we're talking about a newborn. That's not the important part. The important part is that it's in that bedroom and it's in that environment. Why? Because that's where they're gonna wake up. That's when they, when they have their stirrings in the night, well, when they wake up for a feed, we want them to see that, yep, this is where I was last. <laughs> and it will really help and create that nighttime sleep environment. If once your baby is asleep, you feel like you're thinking, well, yes, but Lucy, that's 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. I'm not gonna just stay in the bedroom all night long, all evening. That's okay if you want to settle them into a carry cot or M Moses basket or mobile sleep carrier that you can then, once they're asleep, you can then take them to the sitting room or wherever you're going to be. And I would keep it reasonably dim and not too loud and merry, but you know, being respectful, that little one sleeping, um, and have them close by so that you can obviously be with them and monitor them and keep a close eye on them. It's, it's just about that going to sleep in the bedroom. It's really good practice right from the beginning. Okay, so keep your nighttime mode that I talked about, keep that going through the night. So from that bedtime routine, that's it now. You are, any interaction you have with your baby is in nighttime mode. So if you're changing it in a nappy, you're doing it in nighttime mode. You're very shush, you're very boring. It's matter of fact, it's da da da, nappy changed. Keep it as dark as possible, enough to see what you're doing and then done. Don't be all, oh, we're gonna change your nappy and then let's have a big engaging little bit of fun. And even if they seem quite wakeful, or playful, we want to show them, yeah, that's lovely, but it's night time now, <laughs> okay? So keep your night time mode up, because then, when it's morning, so when it's beyond you know, 6 a.m., 6 or beyond, you then can respond to them and approach them with full animation, and the lights can be on, and then you're gonna help, again, to encourage that circadian rhythm and that wake up time, it's daytime now. Okay, the uh, final tip I wanna give you, and this is a big one, and this is really important, um, to try to get into a rhythm of feeding upon waking. So what I mean by that is they wake for the day, it's morning time, we're gonna take them out of their sleep environment into a wakeful environment and they have their first feed. We have some activity time and then they're gonna have a nap. When they wake up from the nap, they have a milk feed, they have some activity time, then they're gonna have another nap and so on. And this carries on all day. Then at bedtime, that's the one exception, that's the one time where they are going to have a feed before their nighttime sleep. That's the one exception, it's a little bit different because we're preparing them to go for that longer stretch. But the reason this really helps is they, well, there's a couple of really good reasons. One is that they feed upon waking, then they've got that food in them, they can, they've got time to digest it, they're gonna move around, which is good for digestion, and it, they've got that energy to use up from eating and then they're going to settle to sleep without milk putting them to sleep, without milk being the, you know, the kind of milk drunk concept of knocking them out with milk. That's not good for digestion and it can lead to a sleep onset association of milk and, and then almost like needing milk in order to get to sleep. There's so many reasons why it's not great for them um, to, to feed right upon sleep during the day, okay, bedtime. So, 
yes, milk does, like breast milk especially, it does contain really lovely sleep inducing hormones. And there are loads of benefits in that respect, absolutely. But when we're talking about a newborn that only awake for about 45 minutes anyway, this is definitely a good rhythm to get into for them for lots and lots of reasons. So feed upon waking if you can through the day, last feed at bedtime, and then nighttime mode all night long. I hope this has been helpful for you. Once they get a little bit bigger, you can follow my next level strategies that will help them even more to get into great sleep patterns and routines for really, really healthy sleep. So my next episode is going to be all about when are they gonna be sleeping through the night? I'll be answering that in the next episode. In the meantime, you take care and I'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.